the figurines of Ocambaro, a series of artistically driven figurines that perplex all who have the opportunity to examine them. They were discovered by German Waldemar Julstrold in July of 1944 within Acambaro, Mexico. They represent, among other things, unknown camels, animals, enormous ancient reptiles, and possibly even aliens. Various examples from the collection are currently on public display at the Museum of Acambaro. Charles Hapgood, historian of science at Keene College in New Hampshire, best known for his discoveries regarding the Piri Reis maps and ancient Antarctica, has also supported the claim that the figurines are genuine ancient artifacts, which show extinct animals, miniature goblin-esque creatures, and quite possibly ancient extraterrestrial beings. Due to these claims, and the many skeptics who were ferociously arguing against such a posit, Official radiocarbon dating was arranged and conducted in the late 60s, using organic materials from their surfaces. However, to academia's chagrin, the results indicated dates of around 6,500 years old, this based on three samples. Yet, amazingly, the results were ignored in favor of persistence, that they are nothing but modern souvenirs, made for the tourist industry. None of the publicly displayed examples resemble any known extinct dinosaur. Instead, it is suggested that they are representations of once living animals. Although the carbon dating had proven their authenticity, skeptics were still arguing that they were a modern hoax. A few years later, thermoluminescent tests were agreed upon by all, as being sufficient enough to establish the figure's approximate date of manufacture. So, in 1972, Froelich Ramey of Pennsylvania Museum conducted this analysis. He also obtained dates of well over 4,500 years. Indeed, even their excavation was observed by a trained archaeologist known as Charles de Peso. It seems that no matter what certain individuals try in their attempts to discredit the authenticity of the Acambaro figures, all they seem to accomplish is validating them further. Although some of the more compelling figures have disappeared over the years, the vast portion of these mysterious and perplexing artifacts remain on public display. Who made the Acambaro figures? What do most of them depict? With attitudes as they are within mainstream academia, it's a battle to establish the facts surrounding such relics. A battle we are slowly winning. There are many enigmatic, unexplained ancient mysteries which we have covered here on our channel. Many mysterious ruins which are slowly revealing their secrets to us. However, what must be the most intriguing of the historical subcategories has to be the Oparts, out-of-place artifacts that have been found all over Earth. These mystifying items are the only subject within the field which can shed their own very unique lights upon the distant past and sometimes hard to believe possibilities attached to their ages. The island of Samos within Greece is home to a number of these particular artifacts. 1.5 kilometers off the coast of Turkey, this small island has a big history. Within the island's capital museum is a wide range of very impressive artifacts. The most interesting among the collection is undoubtedly the strange bronze artifact which according to academia, merely depicts a strange form of unknown carriage that would have once been pulled by horses. However, some also believe that the strange animals are actually depicting a form of periscope and that the entire artifact is actually that of an ancient submarine. Additionally, there also exists another amazing artifact that we felt was worth a mention, found within private collection. Originally a religious idol, what do you think this wooden artifact is depicting? Could it actually be that of modern-day paragliders, somehow sent back in time, seen and depicted by this once ancient people as a religious vision? It's an incredible, if rather imaginative thought, but it is testament to such artifacts' intriguing nature. There are many incredible, out-of-place artifacts that can be found all over Earth. Each one just waiting to spark our interests. Thanks for watching, guys, and until next time, take care. Although many of our viewers express a belief that all ancient ruins were constructed by our ancestors with methods learned over eons of trial and error, 
Some also devoutly attest to them eventually succumbing to a biblically documented deluge. The fact remains, at this current time in history, we cannot prove this beyond doubt. As a collaboration who actively researches and seeks out these specific ruins in question, we have come into contact with considerable evidence to support many of these ruins having once been submerged, either by fresh or, more often than not, an ancient sea. However, due to their possible extraordinary antiquity, these subversive experiences may have been merely due to climactic changes, rather than divine intervention. There is also growing hostility towards the once popularly touted proposition of ancient aliens, or perhaps ancient astronauts. Many governmental bodies have supposedly come clean over recent years regarding alien disclosure, releasing a number of apparent smoking guns to the public often videos which included military testimonies regarding said encounters. Is it therefore such an absurdity to merely postulate that, based on currently presented information, that an alien civilization, clearly far more advanced than us, is currently observing our planet and species? Perhaps we once knew these beings, before something clearly happened within our past something which made us forget a considerable amount of our own history. Many of the ancient structures found upon our planet defy belief or explanation. Is it so unforgivable to ponder whether our ancestors received an intellectual nudge at some point within antiquity? There are also many ancient tribes whose ancestral accounts often include some sort of visitation with some, like the Dogans, celebrating the processions of the Sirius star system, processions we didn't confirm as accurate until earlier this century. And the Scythians could be seen as the most valuable of these tribes, mainly due to a mysterious idol, once found frozen within one of their ancient tombs, sunk deep into permafrost among the Altai mountains of Serbia. It is known as the Scythian Spaceman, and for good reason, it must be remembered when looking upon such objects with eyes from a modern world that the clothing this idol wears is far removed from the tribe in which created it. It is not only unusual, but eerily reminiscent of our own modern spacesuits. What's more, and perhaps the most damning evidence, is his space helmet, a device that would have been crucial for communication with a being from an entirely different atmosphere. What was the Scythian spaceman? What does it represent? Did the Eurasian nomads actually encounter an ancient astronaut? We find the existence of such artifacts highly compelling. We often encounter a variety of techniques used by individuals and academic bodies who are attempting to stem the flow of true historical knowledge. Indeed, many of the most controversial and compelling artifacts are often stolen, conveniently lost, or simply sold on by their original discoverer, never to be seen again. However, sometimes, these artifacts successfully make it into the public domain, photographed and studied by reliable figures, before these vanishing acts can occur. And our next artifact is no exception. Predictably, the tactic that is seemingly chosen for these particular smoking guns is for the academic and scientific worlds to simply ignore such objects as if they do not exist, or, as with this particular upart, to dismiss it, to look away, and claim it is simply impossible. Known as the Nampa doll, it is a small figurine confirmed beyond doubt as having once been crafted by the hands of man. It was discovered in 1889 by a group of workers who were searching for water near the town of Nampa in southwestern Idaho. They were attempting to create a well, drilling a borehole down to a depth of 295 feet, at which point they began to bring up strange cuts of clay. Amongst them was a unique projectile a tiny clay figure in the shape of a woman. Professor Albert A. Wright of Oberlin College officiated the figure's authenticity in 1979, 
making academia's attempts to vanish the out-of-place figure near impossible. Quote, it was not the product of a small child or amateur, but was made by a true artist. Though badly battered by time, the doll's appearance is still distinct. It has a bulbous head with barely discernible mouth and eyes, broad shoulders, short thick arms, and long legs. There are also faint geometric markings on the figure, which represent either clothing patterns or jewelry. They are found mostly on the chest or around the neck, arms, and wrists. The doll is the image of a person of a high civilization, artistically attired. We find his conclusion of it, being of a person of high civilization, as the most compelling, further supporting our belief that the doll is a leftover remnant of a now lost civilization. And due to academia's dismissive attitude towards the stonework, it is lost as a result of their conspiratorial ignorance. Furthermore, and an additionally intriguing reality, is the dating of the artifact. The geological strata it was discovered amongst is known as the Glens Ferry Formation, that, according to the same entities that deny the artifact's existence, was created approximately 2 million years ago, during the Pliocene-Pleistocene transition. Additionally, before the mass cover-up of artifacts, research, and indeed evidence from the public domain, George Frederick Wright, a geologist from the Boston Society of Natural History, also confirmed this astonishing object's authenticity. Quote, There is no ground to question the fact that this image came up in the sand pump from the depth reported. In visiting the locality in 1890, I took special pains while on the ground to compare the discoloration of the oxide upon the image with that upon the clay balls still found among the debris, and ascertained it to be as nearly identical as it is possible to be. These confirmation evidences, in connection with the very satisfactory character of the evidence, furnished by the parties who made the discovery, Confirmed by Mr. G. M. Gumming of Boston, who was the superintendent of that division, and who knew all the parties, placed the genuineness of the discovery, in my mind, beyond reasonable doubt." End quote. How could a figurine, dated at two million years old, identified as having come from a technologically advanced civilization, exist? Authenticated by a number of official and highly trained individuals, if indeed there has never been another technologically advanced civilization to have flourished here upon our planet. We find the fact that academia is simply attempting to dismiss its existence, proof of their concealment of this truth, making the Nampa figurine undoubtedly highly compelling. The Kimbaya artifacts, found within Colombia in the late 20th century, they are a series of several dozen solid gold artifacts, which were made by the Kimbaya civilization over 3,000 years ago. A few of these fascinating artifacts have become popularly known as the Kimbaya aeroplanes, and for good reason. Not only have these wonderful artifacts almost single-handedly ignited an interest in ancient astronaut theory within millions of people who've come into contact with them, but they also clearly resemble flying craft of our modern age. Now displayed within the Smithsonian Institute, there is one in particular, now known as the Columbia Jet, that has captivated many a great mind over the decades. The Smithsonian's account, placed beneath the ancient artifact, states that the gold artifact is nothing but a mere stylized insect from the Kimbaya culture. This small golden model only about two inches in length and made of solid 22 carat gold, was initially discovered within an ancient tomb. When first catalogued, it was assessed as a zoomorph or animal looking. However, the Columbia jet is now on display with six other similar objects that have been found in tombs within Venezuela and Peru. In 1994, three Germans, Algun Dainboom, Peter Belting and Conrad Lubbers, convinced of it being a miniature replica of what was once an ancient aircraft, decided to create a scale model of the Columbia jet to see once and for all if it could indeed fly. During their research, they found that the object was much more like a modern aircraft, 
or the once supersonic Concorde than any insect. The replica was completed in 1996 and was so aerodynamically stable that it flew better than most contemporary jets. It was so successful, in fact, they decided to build another one, but this time with a full jet engine, and this craft apparently flew just like a modern jet. Was the Columbia jet once a real ancient aeroplane? With results so compelling, it's hard to see how an explanation of it being but a mere insect can possibly stay afloat. One of the more obscure and personal favorite oo-parts of mystery history is a small yet incredibly special unique figurine. Dated to the Stone Age, yet regardless of this extraordinary antiquity, this hollow figurine remaining unopened and unbroken for so long, interestingly, rattled. After a delicate extraction procedure was undertaken, a metallic ball was found inside, a sphere which, due to the aforementioned age of said Upart, should simply not exist. Yet, after further research, we have discovered that this unique figure wasn't a singular anomaly as we first presumed, but was actually part of a collection of equally puzzling artifacts, some of equally unexplainable characteristics. We now know it was found amongst a collection by locals mining for gold in Sierra Leone. They are now known as the Nomaly figures. The statues are now attributed to a number of varying legends in Sierra Leone. Dating from 17,000 BC, some believe that angels who once lived in the heavens were, as a punishment for causing bad behavior, turned into humans and sent to Earth. A legend uncannily similar of certain fallen angel theories. The Nomaly figures are thusly thought to serve as representations of those entities, and were cast as a reminder of how they were banished from the heavens to Earth to live as humans. There are many strange hybrid interpretations within the collection. It includes animals such as monkeys, elephants, lizards, among other curiosities, some also depicted as giants. Quote, while the figures are varied in shape and time, they are uniform in appearance, indicative of a common purpose. That purpose remains unknown, however. The figures were part of a Temni culture and tradition, but that, upon invasion by the Mendi, the tradition was lost and the civilization displaced to other locations. With so many questions and uncertainties, it is unknown if we will ever have definitive answers as to the dating, origins, and purpose of the Nomaly figures. For now, they remain a magnificent representation of the ancient civilizations that preceded those that now live in Sierra Leone." End quote. Asserted curator Frederick Lamp. We find the entire collection, especially our previously covered Upart's metallic sphere, highly compelling.